This month marks the centennial of Calvin Coolidge becoming president. With our troubled times, we have surprisingly much to learn from his tenure in the White House. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. On August 2, 1923, President Warren Harding suddenly died. His vice president, Calvin Coolidge, took the presidential oath of office administered by his father, a justice of the peace. Myth has it that Coolidge passively presided over the Roaring Twenties, a frivolous decade of flappers and bathtub gin. Actually, Coolidge's handling of the presidency is a model for our own era. When Harding and Coolidge won election in 1920, the U.S. was severely troubled. The end of World War I brought a rip-roaring inflation, followed by a devastating depression with massive unemployment. The country was suffering from the Spanish influenza that proportionally killed far more people than did COVID-19. Labor strife reigned. Race rights took hundreds of lives. Bombings by anarchists and other extremists terrorized the nation. Harding and Coolidge promised normalcy, that is, pursuing policies that would restore the peacetime fundamentals that had made the U.S. a vibrant, opportunity-rich nation. Harding started the process of normalcy, but Coolidge pushed it through to success. The emergency and enormous wartime powers and controls assumed by Washington were rescinded. Railroads, telephone companies, and other assets were returned to the private sector. A budget reform was enacted to get a grip on spending. Harding got a tax cut passed, but more were needed. In the face of serious opposition, including within his own party, Coolidge skillfully pushed through Congress two more tax cuts, the second being the most sweeping in American history. He wanted taxes as low as possible so that people, as he put it, could work more for themselves than for the government. That to him was the essence of freedom. Despite the spending proclivities of Congress, Coolidge curbed spending. He was the last president ever to leave office with a budget lower than it was when he assumed office. The country prospered mightily. Contrary to myth, the 20s were actually one of the most innovative decades in history. Never before had the quality of life improved so much for so many. Indoor plumbing was replacing outhouses. Electric lighting was replacing gas lighting. Automobile ownership flourished. The U.S. experienced the greatest road-building program since the days of the Roman Empire. Telephones became widespread. Sales of radio, the hot new technology of the era, roared. Hollywood came into its own. Television was being developed. Labor-saving devices became common. Washing machines, vacuum cleaners, electric irons, and more. Coolidge encouraged the new aviation industry. The progress of the 20s didn't just happen. Coolidge's policies created the environment where American energy and creativity could flourish. Contrast the experience of the U.S. in the 1920s with that of Britain, where unemployment remained stubbornly high. I was fortunate to participate in an excellent documentary called Coolidge, Rediscovering an American President, which can be found on Fox Nation and on South Dakota Public Television. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.